looking for a way to impress in the bill. Don't worry, it's not what you think. The brown envelopes and the transfers are just the start of it. I'm telling you, this new tenure system is just a way of killing off CID via the back door. Yeah, but you've got nothing to worry about, Tosh. You've got your 22 years service in. What's the point of pushing experienced officers out of CID and bunging them back into uniform? Well, they'll be replaced. What, with a bunch of uniform? What happens to the years of knowledge and cultivation when they go down the pan? I do think it's hard on people like Jim, you know. You've got to move with the times, Tosh. Anyway, people are only posted out for two years. You wait until a brown envelope arrives on your desk. You ready? Don't you worry about it, Tosh. You enjoy your pudding while you can. Yeah, I intend to. You skip lunch again, Jim. I'm still grappling with this report, Gulf. The effects of zero tolerance. Are you fit? I thought we were going to see one of my old contacts. What, now? Well, it's your case. If you're not interested... <laughs> I don't believe this. He bunks off all morning, then suddenly he's all fired up. Tosh is just not pulling his weight. He's becoming the invisible man, like this morning. Uh, he had a doctor's appointment, Gav. Really? Yeah, I think this tenure business is given in the willies. Beginning of the end and all that. So he thinks that by doing a go slow, he's helping, does he? I mean, look at Jim Carver. The system affects him, but he's having a go. He's making the best of it. Yeah, it's amazing how uncertainty will galvanise some people into action. Tosh, what are you doing around here? Well, that's a nice welcome for an old mate. No, sorry, it's just... Do you want to come in? I think we'd better, yeah. Unless you're entertaining. No, no, come in. Tosh. This is Jim Carver. I believe you know each other. Hello, Jim. Do you want to sit down? I'm all right, thanks. He's not always this touchy, but he's got a lot on his plate at the moment. Pressures of work and all that. Still keen, are you, Jim? Not particularly. Just keen to know what you can tell us. About what? Tosh reckons you know all the comings and goings around here. Well, you know. Says you know all the faces. I'm not really in touch with anyone these days. How convenient. All the old faces have moved on. I mean, if I could help you, I would, but I really never see anyone these days. Sorry. How do you know you can't help us if you don't know why we're here? I don't know. I just thought... A couple of working girls have been ripping off their clients. Wallets, watches, cufflinks, things like that. <laughs> well, it wasn't me. Oh, what's up, Maria? Got a guilty conscience. I wasn't saying you were involved, Maria. I just thought you might have heard something. No, but if I do, I'll let you know. Oh, that's it, is it? I've come all this way to hear that. Well, what do you want me to say? Well, I was told you were the finger on the pulse of the underworld. I don't know what you mean. Tosh reckons the villain's only got to break wind around here and you know about it. I didn't put it quite like that. Well, like I say, the people I used to know are off the scene. Like who? I don't know. But he must know who they are. Why are you asking? I'm just interested. I might know them as well. Right, that's enough. I think we've overstayed our welcome. You hear anything, you tell your Uncle Tosh, all right? So what's with the strong arm tactics? You dragged me out the office all the way over here just to be told, Tosh, I'll let you know if I hear anything. And you expect me to be Mr Happy, do you? Well, perhaps if you end up setter. Well, you might have time for this, Tosh. I have not don't take your problems out on me. She's been a damn good informant to me over the years. Yeah? But why isn't she registered then? Because she doesn't like being pushed around, that's why. Pushed around? More likely she doesn't know anything. Believe me, Maria's 24 carat. And if you hadn't offended her, she might have given us something. Like what? Syphilis? Right, old. Night. Night. Right, who's up for a swift hour? Oh, go on then. Just twist me arm. Oh, just a quick one. I'm not up for a session, all right? Tosh, yeah. fancy alive now? The only thing I fancy is a strong cup of cocoa and an early night. See you all and on. See you tomorrow, Tosh. Oh, um, I'll be in late.
Amazing. Jim, we tempt you. I not mean no. Oh, go on, be a devil. No, then he'd have to tear himself away from his beloved computer. He can always bring it with him. I'm sure they've got a spare socket down the pub. <laughs> I'll take no notice, Jim. I think you make a lovely couple. How's it going? Yeah, fine, Gov. Your efforts haven't gone unnoticed, you know. Well, I'm not after point scoring. No, no, of course not. But it'll all count on your appraisal. I'm sure you realise that. Well, you've got to make the best of things, haven't you? You thought about the future, the effects of tenure? Yeah, but I'm not too worried. Hmm. When the time comes, it might be a good idea to apply for a plain close secondment somewhere. Thanks, Carvel. I'll bear it in mind. CID, DC Carver. A tosh isn't here, Maria. Look, I don't bear grudges, so why don't you tell me about it? Okay. Half an hour. I'll see you there. <laughs> you had to change your heart, then? Yes. It's difficult. I'm taking a hell of a risk meeting you like this. Don't waste my time again, Maria. How do I know I can trust you? If you've got something to say, just spit it out, yeah? And if I do? Oh, you want money? Uh, still mineral water, please. Don't listen. For God's sake, use a bit of discretion, will you? I'm putting my neck on the line here. So am I. You're not even a registered informant. Well, you'll just have to trust me then, won't you? What about Tosh? He's not going to be too happy about this. Let's leave Tosh out of this, shall we? He wasn't there, was he? And anyway, what I've got to say won't wait. Well, it looks like we're stuck with each other then, doesn't it? If you don't want to hear me out, Jim, that's really no skin off my nose. I'm all ears. What's in it for me? You tell me what you got, I'll tell you what it's worth. You swear you won't stitch me up, none of this will ever get out. If it does, you'll kill me. Who? Tommy Parrish. Go on. The Stafford Road jewel robbery? Yeah, and about 50 other assorted crimes. He's due back in London tomorrow morning. I didn't know if you knew. What do you think? I thought perhaps you'd heard through the grapevine. Well, I have had a whisper. So, how much do you know? I think it's better you tell me what you know first. Like I said, I'm risking my neck. Maria, why don't you register as my informant? That way we can do the whole thing legit. What about Tosh? What about Tosh? If he hasn't bothered to sign you up, then that's his problem. If you register with me and tell me something I don't know, you could be quits in. No paperwork, no fuss. I just want a nice, friendly deal. Just you and me. All right. I know where Parrish is going to be tomorrow. That's got to be worth a couple of hundred. Tommy Parrish. According to my informant, Gov. And this is the first we've heard of it. Well, I think maybe my contact had the idea that we were on to parish already. Registered informant? An acquaintance, Gov. Trustworthy? 24 carat. Did you pay for this? A couple of glasses of wine. Of course, you do realise I've been after Tommy Parrish for about eight years. Yes, Gov. The Stafford Road jewellery job. I was that close to nicking him. I know. Yeah, they all did. He was tipped off. His sister, probably. And while we were making prats of ourselves trying to break into his flat, he was on his toes to Spain. My informant says he was in such a hurry to leave, he left a load of jewellery behind. Well, I don't know about that. We didn't recover so much as a tie pen. Which is why he's coming back. I reckon we could nick him and get the jewellery back. If you get me Tommy Parrish, Jim, I'll personally recommend you for any posting that you fancy. And that's a promise.
Morris is our target. Tommy Parrish. Now, this photo is a few years old. Could you pass them round? This is before we let him slip the country, is it, Gov? Nobody let him slip. We were stitched up. You'd be pleased to know that, according to my information, he's back in London. Arriving this morning somehow, which is why I've dragged you all in so early. Missing us, is he? Not ours, no. But a whole stash of jewellery he didn't have time to collect from a safe deposit box. Now, we don't know where he's picking the stuff up from, but my information is he's going to visit his sister, Lana Parrish. Now, I checked her place out last night. She runs at hairdressers on Wellstead Street. In the parade? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a right dump. So he's meeting her there, is he? Well, your guess is as good as mine. It could be that she's collected the gear and he's going to pick it up, or he's going to do it himself. We don't know. But what we do know is that at some time today, they will be meeting up. And you can bet your pension. He'll be out of the country as fast as his legs will carry him. If I could just point out, our main aim is to stop that happening at all costs. If we recover some jewellery, that's a bonus. But our prime objective is Nick Tommy Parrish. Any idea how he's travelling? Well, as far as we know, he could be flying or doing doggy paddle back to Spain. <laughs> He'll certainly have a false passport. Our plan of action is to target Lana Parish and wait for the rendezvous. Now, I've done a recce. She lives in the flat above the hairdressers, and it seems to me that the only access in or out is through the shop itself. But there is a back entrance, so we'll have to cover every possibility. He'll be the blue-eyed boy if you can pull this one off. Maybe. It still won't change anything, though, will it? Really? Well, let's face it, the day's looming when you'll be out of CRD and back on the beat. We'll see, won't we? Policy's policy, mate, let's face it. Come on, that's enough. Just drop it, yeah? Anything happening, Jim? Negative, Gov. I can't see her at the moment. Jim from Liz. Go ahead. Upstairs window. Well, at least someone's awake. I've got her again. Thanks, Liz. Now I've lost her again. We've got her. She's at the back window now. She's putting her coat on. This could be it. Right. She's in the shop. All units, stand by. Liz? Yeah, ready. Now, she's heading in the direction of Hazen Road. She's wearing a green jacket, black skirt, and she's carrying a red hold all. Sounds promising. She's turning left into Wellbank Road. DCI Meadows from Carver. Go ahead. Location, Gov. Heading north, Dalvin Road, Junction Collett Street. Head for Wellbank Road, Gov. Wellbank Road. What's he think they are doing? Affirmative. You better be able to handle this. She's crossing the road, heading for the station. DS Greg from DC Carver. Go ahead, Jim. How far are you from the station, Sarge? Right by it now, over. Drop Susie outside. Received. Affirmative. Narika, can you contact the DLR and get us permission to use the central control room? OK, let's go. Come on. She's putting the hall door in the locker. And she's heading for the ticket office. OK, Liz. Wait for Susie. Silvertown, please. Okay, please. Stratford, please. She bought a ticket for Silvertown. Silvertown, please. I think she's heading for the city airport. Thank you. Susie, stay with the target. Liz, stay put and maintain eyeball on the locker. DC Carver from DCI Meadows. You go ahead, Gov. We'll send the airport. Received. I've lost her. 
Jim from Liz. Go ahead. Shall I go up to the platform? Negative. Stay at the locker. Come on, Susie. I've got her. What are they playing at? She's just made a call on her mobile. Confirming the rendezvous? Could be. All passing almost. She's left the bag. Right, let's see if we can get a vantage point on this locker before Parrish turns up to collect. Hello. This is Carver and Proctor, Sun Hill. Thanks for this. OK. This way, gentlemen. Where is everyone? Well, surveillance. You haven't heard them? Heard what? Tommy Parrish is in town. Are you serious? Deadly. That's a bit of a turn-up, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Jim only got the word off his snout yesterday evening. Jim? Yeah. You don't know who this snout was, do you, Gov? Well, you'll have to ask him now. Pity you weren't here, though. You're missing all the fun. Right. All we can do is make sure we're ready for him. She's getting off at South Keys. What's she getting off there for? And she got back on. So how's Parrish going to get into this locker, then? Don't know. Screwdriver, skeleton key. I don't think a crook like Parrish is going to let a tin locker come between him and 50 grand's worth of jewellery. 50 grand? Where did that figure come from all of a sudden? According to my informant. Well, if so, surely you should have passed this job on to the robbery squad. Does the DCI know about this? If we'd known for definite, we would have passed it on. Yeah, like hell you would. Meadows wants Parrish for himself, and you want to score yourself some brownie points. Look, I'm just looking after my own interests, all right? Is that what you call it? Tosh, what are you doing here? I want a word, in private. I'm in the middle of an obo, Tosh. Can't it wait? If it could, I want beer. Don't take your eyes off that locker. Maria told you. OK, so you're not happy, but she called me and you weren't around. Yeah, well, I've got a phone at home, you know, and I've also got a mobile. You were knackered. You said you were going straight home for a kip. You thought I might like a share of the action more, like? It was more of a spur-of-the-moment thing. So you set off this whole thing on the strength of that? Well, you said yourself that Maria was a good snout. Yeah, she is, if you know how to handle her. But you don't pressurise her like you were trying to. Well, it worked, didn't it? She told me about Parrish. Yeah, that's what worries me. How much do you pay her? I bought her a couple of drinks in that French wine bar. A couple of drinks to grass up Tommy Parrish. All right, I gave her a few quid as well. You don't really know Maria at all, do you? She wouldn't grass up Parrish. Oh, well, I bow to your superior intelligence. A, she hasn't got the bottle, and B, there used to be an item. Exactly. I mean, maybe they fell out, that's why she told me about him. Look, why would she bother to invent all this? She took my money. We had a deal, that's all. Maria would have to have a better reason for that. Such as? Such as getting you to follow Lana instead of her. Oh, come off it. Look, you're making too much of this. She's a prostitute. She needed money. Parish will show. Yeah. Well, for the sake of your career, I hope so. She's heading for the terminal. Received. With you in about ten, Susie. Maria! She's gone out. Go in and get yourself ready. Are you after business? No, I'm a friend. You're a friend from Spain, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. She was dead excited about seeing you again. You're supposed to be meeting her at the wine bar, aren't you? Of course. I tell you, my memory's... <laughs> What'd you say your name was? I didn't. Yeah, all right, I'm coming. She's at the coffee shop by the check-ins. Right, you go and see if you can spot Parrish anywhere. I'll stay here. Goff? Uh, I'm looking for a woman. I mean, she's supposed to be here. Late forties, a bit dressy. A prostitute with a middle-aged man? Uh, they just left, sir. In a minicab. Oh, cheers, mate. Ta. There's no sign of him. Lana's on a third cup of coffee. I've just checked with the airlines. None of them fly to Spain from here. So it's a white Vauxhall Carton G936FTH. Right. Cheers, mate.
Yeah. What time is that then? Nah, no, sure. It's good, Peter. Hang on a minute, Derek. What? You do realise it's an offence to park at a WL, don't you? Yeah, I was just waiting for that geezer over there. Derek, I'll call you back. Oi, what's going on? You got any documents on you at all? Come on, come on. Ah, Narika, it's Tosh. Yeah. Can you do me an urgent call on a vehicle, please? It's a white Vauxhall Carlton minicab. Is a problem, officer? No, I'm just running a check on this vehicle. Why? Well, it's parked on double yellows. Well, it's not the crime of the century, is it? If you just like to wait in the vehicle, I shouldn't keep you long. No, it's all right. We'll get a black cab. I'll have my luggage out of the boot. All units from Sierra Oscar. No, you hang on now, all right? Attention requested to a white box or car minicab. Golf 936 Foxtrot Tango Hotel. If seen, stop and detain occupants believed to be Thomas Parrish, known to be violent. Approach with caution. Yes, yeah, Sierra Oscar 171, Miss Evan. Go ahead, Reg. Here, read your last message. I'm standing with that vehicle now by the Jelly Deal store in Bream Run. I'll check the passenger's identity and advice. Received. Await assistance, Reg. Anger left and put your foot down. Well, can I ask you your name, please? Why? Well, it's purely routine. Mick Burrows. You got any ID on you at all? No, I don't. Look, this is a minicab, right? I'm not responsible for it. So why don't you sort it out with the driver and let me and my friend get a black cab? Where are you headed for, exactly? Liverpool Street. They weren't asking you. Look, here's my passport, if you don't believe me. Yeah, well, it certainly looks like you. What do you mean, looks like me? That is me. Look! Right, can I go now, please? When I asked you earlier about ID, you said you didn't have any. Why is that? I forgot. Mm. Going on another day, are you? You what? Well, travelling, abroad. He just wants to get his bag and go, OK? Well, no. Not until I've satisfied myself that the details you've given me are accurate. I've no boot! I want my bag! Sir, if you don't control that temporary yours, I might have to arrest you. Give me the keys. Leave it, Tommy. Let's go. No, I ain't leaving without it. Oh. So your name's not Mick, eh? Stand back! Tommy, leave it. No! Give me them keys! <laughs> Stay down! Spread your arms! Don't try, Maria! You wouldn't even outrun me in those shoes. Now, come on! Come on! <laughs> Tosh? Yeah? The boot. Cheers. What you got in here, then? The crown jewels. Thank you. Well, that's torn it. It's certainly a mightily impressive haul. But nicking Parish is the real gem. Not bad for a knack of that old DC in a PC plot, eh? Tonight, Tosh, you are gonna drink. And no excuses about being ill. According to the blood test, I shall be as fit as a butcher's dog in a week or two. So it's a dog and duck then. Yeah, good as anywhere, Gov. Are you not coming, Jim? No, I'll just stay and... Uh... Right, oh. Right. Well, I'll leave you to put this lot to bed, then. Yes, Gov. Don't work too late. All work and no play. <laughs> 